Good afternoon and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. We're transmitting from Abuja. I am Ronke Kolawoli. The Senate has confirmed the reappointment of Godwin Emefele as governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. Emefele was screened by the Senate Committee on Banking, Insurance and other financial institutions which found him qualified for another term of five years. Meanwhile, the Senate is to receive the Minister of Health on Tuesday, 21st of May 2019, to brief it at plenary on the state of facilities in teaching hospitals across the country. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has passed for second reading a bill for an act to establish the Southeast Development Commission. The bill, extensively debated by the lawmakers, was forwarded from the Senate for concurrence. It seeks to serve as catalyst for developing commercial potential of the Southeast region on allocated funds to reconstruct rehabilitate and repair houses and businesses, as well as victims of the civil war. Environmental and development challenges of the region will also be tackled as provided in the bill. The lawmakers also passed for second reading a bill for an act to establish the Federal Capital Territory Health Insurance Agency, which seeks to provide health insurance scheme for all residents of the FCT. Following the recent bill signed into law by President Muhammadu Buhari on the financial autonomy of state houses of assembly and judiciaries, a two-day retreat has opened in Abuja. This is to strategize the modalities of the financial autonomy, which empowers them to receive their allocations straight from the federation account. The idea behind financial autonomy is to strengthen democratic governance for national development. We must build our democracy on the solid rock of strong institutions so that long after we are gone, posterity will be kind to us for the right and selfless decisions we take today. I also enjoy the executive to ensure that whatever is appropriated must, as possible, be released and as a matter of priority. The judiciary and the legislature, both in the states and at the federal level, are placed on first line charge in the disbursement of appropriated funds. In other words, any money duly appropriated by the National Assembly or State Houses of Assembly for the judiciary or legislature is completely and directly released first to them before any other government, ministry, department, and agencies will access their own funds. The executive branch has no discretion on the question of whether the funds will be released it does not have discretion as to the percentage to be released once funds are available in the consolidated revenue funds. I totally align with the notion that legislative and judicial autonomy are necessary preconditions for an enduring democracy. This enhances efficiency, transparency, and accountability in government. The Nigeria Governors Forum fully supports Mr. President's reform agenda and share his passion for transparency and zero corruption. Some key players speaking at the Conference of Autonomy of State Legislature and Judiciary. Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari has left Abuja for Saudi Arabia to honor an invitation by King Salman bin Abdulaziz, custodian of the two holy mosques in Mecca and Medina. State House correspondent Adam Sambo reports. 
that the president was seen off at the Namdi Azikwe International Airport by the minister of the FCT, Mohamed Musa Bello, his chief of staff, Abba Kiari, acting inspector general of police, Mohamed Adamu, and other senior government officials. Why in the Holy Land, President Buhari is expected to perform the lesser pilgrimage, otherwise referred to as Umrah. The Nigerian leader has been accompanied on the journey of faith by close prisoner aides. He is expected back in the country on Tuesday, 21st of this month. Nigerian government is conversing for a pan-African agenda that will strengthen the band of African irrespective of their regions. Minister of Foreign Affairs Jeffrey Onyama re-echoed the movement when he was received in Zimbabwe in continuation of his visit and donation to flood-ravaged countries. Ilyasu Adiyakubu reports. Gathering here, we are politicians. And at all times, we must speak politics on how do we reposition Africa as an equal partner in the geopolitics mm -hmm. of this world. Pan-Africanism is a worldwide intellectual movement aimed at encouraging and strengthening bonds of solidarity between people of African descent. The movement extends beyond the continent with a substantial support base among Africans. Foreign Affairs Minister said President Buhari is committed to making Africa one indivisible entity for the common goals and African objectives. He said any of the African countries affected negatively or positively, the government of Nigeria will show solidarity, hence the support in the southern African countries affected by a flood. Uh, the true spirit of uh, African brotherness and uh, brotherhood and, uh, and uh, one united uh, African peoples. The Zimbabwean acting Minister of Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Ken Metemi, and that of Health and Child Care, Dr. Obadia Moyo, who received the minister, could not hide their joy over what they describe as pan-Africanism, taking direction of unity, love and solidarity for the African countries. And indeed, this is the pan-African way of doing things. We have to assist each other, indeed, all the liberation movement. Nigerian communities in Zimbabwe were hosted to a dinner where the minister decried the attitude of some Nigerians who indulge in criminal acts at the detriment of majority who are lovely and in their living in the diaspora. From Harare in Zimbabwe, Eliasu Aliakubu, NTA News. And here in Nigeria, the federal government has proposed the establishment of a robust rewards and recognition scheme for civil servants. Head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, in a message said the rewards system is to serve as a motivational tool in developing an efficient, productive, incorruptible and citizen-centered culture in the nation's civil service. Adebola Brookstein Sunday reports. The civil service is known as the engine room of government, and over the years, some civil servants that have distinguished themselves at their duty posts have been recognized. But the federal government has proposed an expansion of the reward and recognition scheme in the civil service. Key players debated and adopted some motions leading to the adoption of the scheme. Represented by the Permanent Secretary, Service Welfare Office, the head of the Civil Service of the Federation, Winifred Oyoita, said the system will help in accelerating the fulfillment of the 2017-2020 strategy and implementation plan. The service-wide ministries, departments and agencies, as well as departmental rewards and recognition scheme encapsulates the entire robust system. And the composition of the selection committees are done in a fashion to ensure credibility, integrity and professionalism in the selection of awardees. Civil servants or public servants will be willing to work, will be very happy to work, and they will contribute their best towards attainment of Nigerian public service to be among the first 20 in the world by the year 2020. It's a good step in the right direction. 
and we must give kudos to His Excellency the Minister President for actually bringing this on board through the head of civil service of uh, Federation. It is expected that the reward system will assist in improving the level of productivity as well as attract, nurture, develop and retain the best employees in the service. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NGA News. To other news now, the Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, has donated relief materials to 2018 flood victims in Delta State. Eloho Agbara reports that Delta is among the 20 states that have benefited so far. The People Oriented Administration of President Muhammad Ubuari has continued to live up to its billings. The latest effort in this direction is a strict compliance of ministries, departments and agencies to directives from the presidency. One of such agencies is the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, which is continuing in the distribution of relief materials to flood victims nationwide. This time, the agency is in Delta States. The call by various states and the federal government, led by the Vice President, Professor Yemi Ochibajo, to come down and support as corporate uh, organization. And uh, we're doing this relief material donation to alleviate the suffering of the afflicted. Commissioner for Special Duties, Ernest Owezi, received relief materials on behalf of the state government. To encourage other uh, corporate entities who before now did not deem it fit to make similar gesture towards the uh, plight of disaster victims in the state, uh, especially flood victims of 2018, to emulate NIMASA and to do likewise. The delegation from NIMASA was also at the National Identity Management Commission, NIMSI, to donate some equipment for some offices affected by flood. Elo, Agra, and in a related development, internally displaced persons from Yola North, Bandagali, Mubi, and Michika local government areas in Adamawa State will now have cause to smile. This follows the flag off of sharing of relief materials acquired by the Nigerian Red Society in collaboration Red Cross Society in collaboration with other humanitarian agencies. Simon Asha reports that the sharing was aimed at cushioning the hardship of the IDPs, especially in this holy month of Ramadan. Nothing could bring relief and give hope to an internally displaced person than receiving humanitarian assistance that will reduce the burden of survival, thereby enhancing his social economic well being. This is the experience IDP is living in host communities in Minchika, Madagali, Mubi, Ayola South local government areas of Adam Asset are excited about as the official flag of sharing of relief materials for their upkeep commenced at Chambaji in Yola South as they received relief materials to ameliorate their difficulties. So what we've seen here today, we'll do a needs assessment, and that needs assessment will not drive what we're going to spend in the future. But the ultimate goal is that the children here, the women, the men, have to return to normal. The Red Cross is always ready to assist in their own little way to see that the relief materials get to the targeted. Governor Omar Gibirilla, represented by the Executive Secretary, Adam Asset Emergency Management Agency, Muhammad Aminu Suleiman, says, the gesture will not have come at a better time than now, considering the hardship faced by the IDPs in the state. The delegation from Nigerian Red Cross and the donor agencies earlier visited the Library of Adamawa, Mahamadu, Barkindo, Aliu Mustafa, and the Speaker Adama State of Assembly, Kabiru Mijinyawa, where they intimated them of their visit. In Yola, Simon Asha, NTA News. Still on humanitarian ground, the welfare of orphans under the care of the Niger state government has received a boost with the inauguration of 120 million naira state of the art facility Imina for use. Dauda Mohammed reports that the facility has been under construction for the past 32 years. Hmm. Four-year-old Fatima Abdullahi is one of the 53 orphans in the care of the Social Welfare Department of the Niger State Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development. Fatima, like others in the care of the ministry, have been living in this facility which has been inadequate for their care. The inauguration for use of a new state-of-the-art facility to care for orphans 
by the Niger State Governor Abu Bakr Sani Bello is an attempt to improve the care of orphans that have never experienced the normal family life. The new facility, equipped with a playground, male and female sections, nursery, reception, dining hall, administrative block, is structured to give the orphans a homely experience. Yes, we have our own staff, but uh, for sustainability, I think it will be better managed by NGOs that have uh, the interest of uh, such uh, work at heart. We have a, a CCTV camera installed in this facility and it will be hooked up to various people so that we can monitor what is happening to the, uh, the orphanage. All the things that have been imposed in this new orphanage room is better than before. Presently, out of 53 orphans in the care, 38 are in the facility, while 15 are attending boarding schools across the state. Imina Dauda Mohammed, NTA News. You're watching Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority. Now time to take more reports, and this time is from Lagos. Hingino is our guide. Hello, Hingino. Thank you, Ronke, and welcome to Lagos. The increasing cases of accidents along Lagos Ibadan Expressway and the resultant gridlock have been attributed to indiscipline, reckless driving, and non-compliance to traffic rules by motorists. Dotun Oguemi, who visited the roads where reconstruction works are still on, reports that stakeholders are calling for more consciousness by motorists to drive safely. Daily. Reported cases of broken down vehicles and trucks, as well as accidents resulting in traffic congestion along Nigeria's busiest route, the Lagos Ibada Expressway, has become a norm. The attitude of drivers who oftentimes drive against traffic, disobey traffic rules, and drive vehicles that are not roadworthy are some factors that have led to unwanted loss of man hours and, in the worst instance, impatience leading to deaths. Of the 272 deaths we recorded last year, half of them were at construction zone. And of all the 380,000 vehicles that are in Ogun State, 40% of them are trucks. Almost the entire stretch of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway is a construction zone as work is ongoing across different sections while completed parts have been opened up to traffic. There is, however, a need for reorientation of drivers for seamless flow of traffic. Basically, not to drive against traffic. And of course, for people to maintain their vehicles, to ensure that their vehicles are well maintained. Not the vehicle you put on the road before you reach how many kilometers the vehicle breaks down. And at this junction where road reconstruction is still ongoing, stakeholders are advocating that motorists maintain a 50 km per hour speed limit to avoid cases of accidents and road crashes. In Lagos, Dotson Ogmiami, NTA News. Proper funding of the health sector is key to national development because it affects the general productivity of human beings. The acting director of studies, National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPS Kuru, Dr. Nasiruddin Usman, made the assertion in Lagos when members of Cross 41 visited the Arbor of Lagos as part of their study tour. These are members of Group 5 of the Senior Executive Course 41 from the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPS Kuru. Their tour of Lagos is not about sightseeing, but to see how they can contribute to national development through advocacy for universal health care delivery in Nigeria. They believe their interaction with the OBA will make positive impact in the health sector because traditional rulers are closer to the people of the grassroots who are mostly affected by health challenges. For Lagos State, since we came, uh, we've seen uh, very, very serious efforts on the part of government to rejuvenate uh, the health sector. Uh, essentially, uh, there are two issues funding and management. Um, government cannot do it alone. For Oba Rilwan Akiolu, an alumnus of the institute, it was a nostalgic moment. I don't play with tax at all. And that is how 
this country can develop. The president cannot do it alone. It is expected that their campaign will make impact in health policy formulation. Promoting foreign relations through cultural diplomacy should be enhanced by to derive more benefits and further strengthen the bond among nations. This was the crux of a lecture organized by the National Institute for Cultural Orientation in Lagos. Awal Yusuf Jibo reports that the forum brought together stakeholders from the public and private sectors, including the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, who was represented. Nigeria's foreign policy thrust is described as pro-Africa, with critical attainment of the fundamental principles and objectives of African unity, which includes peaceful settlement of disputes, social integration, regional economic cooperation and development. The country is also blessed with diverse and unique cultural heritage. It is against this background that stakeholders at the lecture re-emphasize the importance of culture as a tool for foreign relations. Government has done so much, a lot of bilateral agreements, but it's just the implementation and the sustenance of the programs that's, that we need to lay emphasis on. Most things we trivialize, and, and I believe that we can be more fastidious in promoting, uh, using culture to, to, to promote diplomacy. The urgent need to preserve, promote, and present the rich attraction of Nigeria's diverse culture was highlighted as a positive tool for Nigerians in diaspora to project the image of the country. For people to come to Nigeria, if it's difficult for Nigerians to go abroad, they are there as diasporans. And of course, it's the clothes they wear that people see. It is their character that people see. It is the language they speak. It is their relationship, the behavioral patterns of this world who call the diaspora. It's what people out there see and it's what they used to rate us as Nigerians. We must learn to wear our clothing, eat our food, and also wear and relate with those where they are living. From the reciprocal gifts of ancient rulers to modern diplomacy, culture has been an effective tool for friendly relations and also provides a platform for appreciating commonality and shared values. In Lagos, Awal Yusuf Jibo, NTA News. That's our contribution from Lagos. Back to Ron K in Abuja for more on Nationwide. Thank you, Hingino. And now to security matters. The Nigeria Police Force has paraded more than 50 notorious criminals operating along the Abuja Kaduna Expressway with sophisticated weapons recovered. Donyi Dia reports that this formed part of the renewed efforts of the Acting Inspector General of Police to rid the area of crime and restore sanity. the Abuja Kaduna Expressway which has been in the media in the recent past following the activities of bandits, kidnappers, robbers and other criminals around this axis. A situation which has given residents of Abuja and Kaduna sleepless nights and as a result the Inspector General of Police, as part of measures to get rid of these criminal activities, instituted the Operation Puff Adder in the command to fish out all criminals and also mop up weapons that are being used to terrorize innocent citizens. And that is the result of what we are seeing this afternoon with the arrest of suspects and weapons being recovered. And it is expected that with the continuation of Operation Puff Adder in this corridor, there will be sanity for motorists and other citizens plying the area. From Sabon Tacha, Kaduna State, Doni Dia, NC News. And now the Nigerian army is accusing politicians of heightening security threats in some parts of the country. The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Tukur Buratai, alleged this while receiving members of the House Committee on Army. Defense correspondent Ismail Musa, who is at the Theater Command Operation Lafia Dole in Meduguri Barano State, now reports. Nigeria is experiencing different emerging internal security threats in different parts of the country. These threats range from kidnapping, banditry and cattle rustling in the northwest, cultism and pipeline vandalism in the south-south, while insurgency dominate the northeast. 
though there are evolving security operations by the military and other security agencies to curb this menace that have killed and displaced thousands of people. The challenge, however, requires collective responsibility. The myriads of security challenges we are facing right now is a fallout of uh, the just concluded general elections. There are several political interests, politicians in particular, whom saw their defeat. Therefore, they are trying to take a revenge, sponsoring some of these criminal activities, even the banditry that seemingly uh, is between farmers and herders. Uh, there are strong political undertone and strong political influence, including the kidnapping. I will use this opportunity to call on the honorable members here, the chairman and your members, to prevail on some of these politicians. I want to assure you that the, the final report that we are working to submit next week will include some of the things that we see today, so that we have records for those coming behind us in the committee. The visiting house committee members taught Army's workshop and the 7th Division Hospital to empathize with the wounded and sick officers and soldiers. From the headquarters of Operation Lafayette Adoli in Meduguri, Borno State, Ismail Musa, NTA News. With the prevailing security situation in the country, such as terrorism, banditry, illicit drug and human trafficking, which have become serious concern to Nigerians, Pasiva Security and Safety Agencies Limited is collaborating with China Security Technology to combat insecurity in the country. Francis Form was at the official launch of the partnership in Abuja. This signing and exchange of cooperation working agreement between Percival Security and Safety Agencies Limited and the China Technology Security Group sealed the deal. Signaling the commencement of the partnership geared towards reducing the rates of crime and criminality in the country, Managing Director and Chief Executive of Percival Security said the business of security should not be seen as government's duty alone. We at PSSA provide anti-panic button service whereby subscribers in distress who reach us with a press of a button on their phones and we in turn reach out to relevant security agencies to salvage them. We believe that through this, our society becomes safer, business friendly, and more development shall take place both by individuals and the government. Whenever there is insecurity, we will be the first to know and to render assistance. Vice President of China Security Technology believes that Nigeria needs high technology to improve security in the country. You know, Nigeria is a development, you know, the, the country like China. So now they need high technology and also they need their different, you know, security company to involve the business in Nigeria. Pasival Security and Safety Agencies Limited is created by retired security experts to join the campaign to combat insecurity in the country. In Abuja, Franks is from NTA News. And stay on security. The Nigerian police force says it has uncovered plots by some people claiming to be climate and environmental activists to carry out coordinated attacks on oil installations in the country, particularly in the Niger Delta region. A statement by the force public relations officer, Frank Mbanuz, that the plot is politically motivated and is intended to have consequences on national security, economic development, and global oil market. Mbas states that the acting inspector general of police has taken steps to mitigate this by ordering commissioners of police nationwide a designated state to intensify surveillance missions around oil facilities and other critical national infrastructure. The acting IGP has also directed field commanders 
to ensure that proactive measures for neutralizing the threats are in place. This comes with a strong warning to plotters that there will be dire consequences and citizens should remain vigilant as well as report any suspicious character. You're watching NT Nationwide. We now take some messages, more reports when we come back. The clock is ticking. It's the signal for the inauguration of the 16th president of Nigeria and 5th president in the 4th Nigerian Republic. Nigerians are set to mark the beginning of the second term of Muhammadu Buhari as president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The first term saw the most massive critical infrastructural development, agricultural revolution, war against corruption, tackling insecurity, and unprecedented social investment programs. Our opportunity to keep moving our country on the path to a prosperous future. It's the next level for the Nigerian people. This is our time as Nigerians. Come, let us celebrate the next level with Muhammad Buhari, President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Date, Wednesday, 29th May 2019. Venue, Eagle Square, Abuja. Time, 8 a.m. prompt. Roll out the drums. Come, let's celebrate. Announcer, Boss Gida Mustafa, Secretary to Government of the Federation and Chairman, 2019 Presidential Inauguration Committee. The management of the Nigeria Television Authority, NTA, Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, FRCN, and Voice of Nigeria, cordially invites the general public to the 14th edition of the annual Ramadan lecture, which will, inshallah, hold on Saturday, 18th May 2019. The topic is tolerance in Islam to be delivered by Sheikh Mohammed Nuruddin Lemu, Director of Research and Training, the Awa Institute of Nigeria Islamic Education Trust, Mina Niger State. The venue for the event is Lumana Multipurpose Hall, River Road, Jabi Road East, Gwarimi Jerry Kaduna by 9 a.m. Under the distinguished chairmanship of Lamido of Adamawa, His Royal Highness Muhammad Berkindo Aliyu Mustafa, the chief host is His Excellency Malam Nasr Ahmed Er Rufai, the executive governor of Kaduna State. Royal Father of the Day is His Royal Highness Al Haji Dr. Show Idris CFA MF Zezo. The host are Malin Yakubi Muhammad, Director General of Nigeria Television Authority, Malam Mansur Liman, Director General of Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, and Dr. Osta Kichiku, Director General of Voice of Nigeria, announce our organizing committee. You are welcome. Welcome. You can follow us on all our social media platforms Facebook at NTA Network News, Instagram at NTA Network, Twitter at NTA News Now, YouTube at NTA News Online, or visit www.nta.ng. For live streaming, visit www.nta.ng. Now, you can stay updated on the go, be it on your TV, iPhone, laptop, or iPad. Or download the NTA mobile application from your Play Store or App Store. NTA, you can't beat the rich. Get the latest news and updates from across Nigeria on NTA Nationwide. NTA Nationwide, weekdays by 4 p.m. Get it first. Get it fresh. Glad to know you're still here with us on NTA. Nigeria now exports cement, and this is one out of the many success stories in the revamped solid mineral sector in the country. Minister of State Mines and Steel Development Abubakar Bawabuari said this in Abuja when a delegation from Morocco, as well as from the private sector, visited the ministry. Mie Ogidi reports. Cranes rising high in different locations nationwide all pointing downwards, prospecting and discovering more solid minerals. At the last count, they are 44, and the Minister of State Mines and Steel Development is also making foreign trips to market these resources. Just fortnight ago, he was in Marrakesh, Morocco, for this purpose. Today, these investors from Morocco are in Nigeria to invest in the sector. This is an outcome of a memorandum of understanding entered into in Marrakesh by the two countries, and the development of phosphate and other mineral resources are the center of this pact. 
our president attached a lot of importance to uh, his relationship with the King of Morocco. I want to leverage on that relationship, your experience and so on, to be able to develop our own uh, uh, phosphates. After hosting the delegation from Morocco, the Minister of Mines and Steel was engaged by another group, this time from the banking industry. After watching the sector from a distance and satisfied with the level of transparency, some chief executive officers of major financial institutions have declared to invest in the sector. For the Minister of Mines and Steel Development, this breakthrough comes with Nigeria's self-sufficiency in more fronts. We are today self-sufficient in cement production and now exporting uh, uh, cement. We want to do the same thing in carbonate uh, minerals so that we can address the issue of the pharmaceuticals, water treatment, and the rest of uh, them. For the Executive Secretary of the Solid Minerals Development Fund, Fatima Shinkrafi, more funding from the private sector will open more frontiers in the industry. Mayor Ogidi, NT News. Federal Government Food Security Council and NEMA support farmers in Baruno. For details of these and other stories, let's join Naomi in our Medjugorje Network Center. Hello, Naomi. Hello, Ronke, and welcome to Medjugorje. 12,000 farmers in Borno State affected by Boko Haram insurgency are expected to benefit from the Emergency Agricultural Intervention Program of the Federal Government through the National Food Security Council and National Emergency Management Agency. Target beneficiaries are undergoing screening and documentation in Medjugorje, the Borno State capital, ahead of the intervention covering states in the Northeast that have suffered from armed conflicts. Abu Bakr Muhammad Musa reports. The Emergency Agricultural Intervention Program is a comprehensive strategy aimed at supporting farmers who were affected by Boko Haram crisis and flood, among other disasters to enable them begin the process of recovery for improved livelihoods. Four different teams comprising officials of Borno State Emergency Management Agency and the State Ministry of Agriculture are conducting the screening as well as documentation exercise towards ensuring that all the beneficiaries are captured. The Emergency Agricultural Intervention Program is targeting mainly persons engaged in mixed farming across 12 local government areas of Borno State and has so far screened a significant number of farmers. What the government expects from them is to make sure that whatever assistance is given to them is being made use of judiciously. Director, Relief and Disaster Management of Borno State Emergency Management Agency, Ali Isa Yauba, said the intervention will ensure food security in Borno. Some of the beneficiaries commended the federal government for helping them to regain their means of livelihood in their time of need. Assorted farming inputs will be distributed to all the farmers upon completion of the screening and documentation exercise. In Meduguri, Abu Bakr Mohammed Musa, NT News. Borno State Emergency Management Agency has taken delivery of 100 modernized wheelchairs donated by Broader Healthy Social Development Initiative based in Germany for distribution to persons living with disability. The gesture was done in synergy with the Center for the Reduction of Poverty and the Nigerian Ambassador to Germany, Yusuf Maitama. Memuna Garba reports. Flagging of the distribution to selected persons living with disability from Bama, Dikwa, and other local government areas. Executive Chairman of SEMA, Yabawa Kolo, said the gesture of this magnitude signifies the passion to serve humanity and spirit of brotherhood exhibited by the German based foundation. Permanent Secretary, Minister of Women Affairs and Social Development, Dr. Hawa Mai Musa, noted with satisfaction that the gesture will enhance the lives of the people living with disability. President Bruder Hilfe Social Development Initiative, Mary Balmibe Bruder said, this is the first first of the intervention in Northeast and the beneficiaries will be trained on how to maintain the equipment. Head of Office UNHCR Alexander Kishara expressed the hope that more private sector synergy will be strengthened in the Northeast so as to reach the most vulnerable members of the society. 
The beneficiaries who were overwhelmed by the quality of wheelchairs distributed are sure to judiciously utilize them and pray God to reward the donors abundantly. In Maiduguri, Maimuna Garba, NTA News. Massive levels of felling of trees for firewood and charcoal production as energy for cooking is a major threat to environmental conservation in Borno State, which experts attribute to the increasing challenges facing the ecosystem. Yagun Subukar examines the scale of deforestation in an environment suffering from harsh realities of drought and desertification. Felling of trees for use as main source of energy for cooking is old as mankind. Here in Borno, the tradition of cooking with firewood and charcoal have been sustained despite the availability of alternative sources with less threats of environment protection. This is just one collection point for firewood coming into Meduguri from nearby forests and farms and are consumed at a massive scale by a percentage of users who are left with no option due to the high cost of other sources of energy. Population growth has now led to a massive deforestation of all forest resources, reducing large amount of vegetative cover for fuel. This situation has impacted negatively on the environment. Human factors like felling of trees to source for firewood and charcoal has led to deforestation, erosion and sandstorms among others. According to experts, if these trends are left unchecked, could also lead to drought and reduce soil fertility as well as expose the soil to wind and water erosion. If we control the cutting of the tree for the process of our people preparing their meal at home, definitely the must be available, the gas for cooking must also be available. So if all this thing will not be available, the, the, the rapid cutting of trees will continue and the next generation will be endangered. Government is planting and distributing over 2 million seedlings every year free of charge to farmers. In Meiduguri, Yagum Subukar, NTA News. That's our contribution from Meiduguri. Ronke is back to you in Abuja. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too, Naomi. Our new modern market is now at the doorsteps of Dawaki people in the Federal Capital Territory, aimed at driving socio-economic development of the people. Hawa Gimba reports. Very hard working man. I'm sure the people of Wadi will appreciate him more when he lives. These words breathe a new lease of life into business activities in Dawaki as representative of the FCT Minister and Secretary Area Council Service Secretariat, Senator Isa Mena, joined residents of Buari Area Council to launch a market which is key to revenue generation and development. This child is a child of necessity. And I want to say in Buari Area Council, our business is to ensure that we improve on life of the residents of Buari Area Council. In their goodwill messages, member representing Ama Buari constituency, Beatrice Zafania Gisalo, traditional rulers, some political leaders say establishing such markets is to enable residents benefit from such economic projects. I want to urge that in as much that is very soon you hand over to another government, the next government should take over where he stop and uh, we will also see his own performances. But the performance of Musa Diko has been 100%. He has practicalized this to the people of Guari Area Council to initiate a such project in the council. It's not every chairman that will come to power within three years and make this achievement. But as you see today, by the grace of God, in another five, ten years, you still see the same uh, quality. The new Dawaki Ultramodern Market has open shops, cold rooms, lock-up shops, police stations, and fire service outlets, among others. Hawagimba, NTA News. From that, from that we go to another security story. And the Nigerian Air Force is carrying out strategic training to empower its officers and men towards ensuring strict observance of all rules of engagement and international humanitarian laws in all its peace mission. Commandant Military Training Center Air Commodore Jibrin Usman Savez while flagging off the training. Ibrahim Belogunda reports. Coming from the hills of recurring claims and counterclaims of violations of human rights 
and international laws, especially by some international organizations and sections of the media, in respect of operations the military is carrying out. The Nigerian Air Force is retraining its officers and men on international humanitarian laws in armed conflict. The Commandant Military Training Center, Air Commodore Jibril Usman, said, the Nigerian Air Force accords great importance to international humanitarian laws and rules of engagement in various operations in the country and beyond. Hence, they strive to update officers and men on human rights and international laws in armed conflict. Once you are employed for any armed conflict, there are rules and regulations guiding such engagement. And uh, our personnel should be able to be up and doing in knowing the do's and the don'ts. They are better informed and I think it will enhance any operation should they be employed. There were lectures on international humanitarian law of armed conflict, how to apply the law, what the law means, and how to regulate the conduct of soldiers during hostilities and to mitigate the suffering of civilians. In Kaduna, Ibrahim Bellogunda, NTA News. And Dual State Government trains 4,600 teachers. This and more as we join Ogo Chukuka in Benin. Hello, Ogo Chuku. Hello, Ronke. Good afternoon and welcome to Benin. Governor Godwin Obaseki says the resources of Edo will be used for the development of the entire state, particularly in education and health. He was speaking at the graduation ceremony of Edo Star Teachers Professional Development Program at the Samuel Obemudia Model College, Benin. Good luck, Naini. Completes the report. In 2018, the Edo State Government trained 7,600 teachers on the use of technology under the Edo Basic Education Sector Transformation, Edo Best. One year on, reports from schools captured by the initiative turned out to be impressive. This informed the state government to train another 4,600 teachers under the initiative. Governor Godwin Obaseki, accompanied by members of his cabinet and some leaders of the APC, are here to witness their graduation. The governor told the graduating teachers that the state government's decision to transform the system remains unshaken in spite of the pressure. This is just the beginning. We will continue to train you. It's a continuous process. And our goal is that by the time we finish, Edo, as it has always been, will be the number one state in education in Nigeria. Our emphasis is on education. No child will be left behind. And I want to assure you that my party is solidly behind me. Chairman Subeb, Dr. Juan of Yahweh, assured the governor of the teacher's readiness to deliver effectively in the new dispensation. In Benin, good luck in Aini. NT News. And members-elect into the State House of Assembly have been taking through an induction program with a charge on them to represent their people adequately through their actions, ideas, policies and programs. Elizabeth Wotwama has that report. The induction training is to provide the legislators with tools and necessary insights on how best legislators can deliver on their mandate of lawmaking, representation and oversight functions. We need to understand that the legislative arm, the judicial arm, and the executive arm is one government. And until we co coexist and understand each other, we cannot deliver in the dividends of democracy that we did promise while we were contesting to be the legislator. This induction is just to bring in members of the 7th Assembly to show them what we are doing where they should start from. Making laws and executing oversight functions seamlessly while performing basic functions of representation by individual lawmakers within the context of the Legislative Assembly were the focus of a message titled General Functions of the Legislature delivered by a former clerk of the House, Egbe Eroma in Benin. Elizabeth Owotwoma, NCA News. 
A security stakeholders meeting by the police in Zone 11 has ended in Akure on the state with a resolve to upgrade security mechanism in the riverine area of the state to curb the increasing rate of crimes in the area. Olubumi Oke reports. It was a convergence of representatives of the traditional institution, religious leaders and other key players on security issue in the state. The Assistant Inspector General of Police, Zone 11, Adeleke Uyibade, explained that arrangements are ongoing with the state government to equip the Marine Police to attack suspected criminals in the riverine area of the state. When you are talking of community policing, it stands on three areas. Number one is problem solving, public partnership, and organizational transformation. What is the take home from the security forum? I think it will checkmate some of the SSEs and to see how they can really cooperate with the society at large to curb criminal acts. I think it's a welcome development, it's a laudable development. The session not only brainstormed on security challenges in the state, but ideas were also exchanged among participants on crime fighting strategies. In Akure, Ulubumi, OK, NT News. The news continues in Abuja. Runke, it's back to you. Thank you, Ogochukuka. Let's quickly go on another break before we bring you more reports. Information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stir disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. NTA Television College JOS announces admissions into two-year diploma programs in film and television production, television engineering, and broadcast journalism. The sale of forms will commence on the 13th of May and run through 30th July 2019. Admission forms can be obtained from all marketing offices, NTA state capital stations, zonal centers, or at the office of the academic secretary, NTA Television College, Rayfield JOS. On payment of a non-refundable fee of 7,500 naira in bank draft in favor of NTA, NTA TV College. Applicants can also obtain the forms through the NTA TV College portal at www.ntatvc.edu.nj. Applicants are required to possess five credits in GCE or SSCE in relevant areas of study in not more than two sittings, including English and mathematics. All properly completed forms attached with photocopies of credentials must be submitted on or before 30th July 2019. For further inquiries, please visit our website at ntatvc.com or call 0803-3144-383. NTA TV College, training you to be the best you want to be. When you hear that sound, you know that Nigeria's most authentic newscast is about to begin.
MTA Network News, breaking the news for over 40 years. It's time for Sports Update. Tamara Biwe is presenting. Youth and Sports Development Minister Solomon Dalu